morning. Uh, we had a nice day at the Bear Garden Hostel here in Ceres, Virginia, a little small town. Uh, not as hard to get to this time when you come over the hills, I guess, from the uh, other side. We had small roads last time and just backwoods wondering where we were going. This way it was a pretty straight shot from Bland, so um, not so bad this time. No, no, it was bad. It was just the it's it's a it was quite the drive. It was an last easier time. drive this time. Much easier drive. Yeah. yeah. So I had a nice day, uh, hung out, met met a young woman uh, who stayed with us last night, and now we're hiking out. It's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, no rain coming in. Uh, tomorrow more. But today. But today, no rain. Yeah. Have tomorrow. Heavy pack because we bought too much food per usual when we were at Waynesboro. So. Probably have food for like three or so days, mm -hmm. and we only really need to do like a day and a half or so. So we're talking about our options. But anyway, that's a little hike and see what's going. I understand there's pastures up ahead, mm -hmm. uh, maybe filled with ticks and chiggers. But we put on our bug goop. We have permethrin on our clothes, maybe still a little residual. Oh, and a car and coming. And a car coming. Out to our first pasture. Supposedly we're gonna hit a few of these this morning. That's beautiful out here. Yeah, it's very nice morning. Very nice and cool. I think it's about 60. Low 60s. Probably upper 70s, 60s by now. All right, go, Pat, the problem going through this cow pasture is you run across cows, and now they're blocking the trail. So we'll have to kind of move them along. Oh, good, they're moving. Except for that one, he's looking at us now. Uh -huh. Oh, there he goes. Not out of. Now a view from the other side. Oh, both poles at once. She's a little smarter than her husband. The balance, the grace, the poise. The pose. Is she gonna stick the landing? <laughs> Those are the cows in the background, not her. Yay! It's their signal that, okay, the people have gone. Yeah, I'll probably pay for that later. As Paul's climbing this, the next fence die, I was just looking at this creek and look at the leaf colors. I'm not sure if it's already thinking it's fall, but sure is beautiful here. We just came out of the forest to this beautiful, pasture. Way out there, right in that area by that little tree in the shade right there, was where we came out of the trail and stopped and took a picture down into the valley and up towards this side. So we're about halfway up the hill on this side. Still a beautiful view. It's beautiful out there, but kind of fun to look back at where you were. Yeah, it doesn't show up on camera to adjust for it, but. It is really dark in here because of the overhang of the roadies. Patches of light coming through up here. But to the naked eye, it actually seems a lot darker than what I'm seeing on my screen. Let's get that Mirkwood feel as you go through the green tunnel of roadies. Kind of fun, except for this section in a few areas hasn't been maintained in a while, I guess. I don't know how long it takes to degrade, but a lot of places the brushes have been attacking us and a bit overgrown, but at least in this thick overgrown portion, the shade tends to keep the underbrush out. And now I'll come out of it and start getting more brush encroaching into the trail, which is okay until they have thorns. 
Through some of these areas, I keep thinking, if I was to walk out and meet another hiker coming the other way, I just have the urge to say, Dr. Livingston, I presume. But I think that's kind of wasted on your reference. But maybe it's just gratitude training for uh, what the trail maintainers do, because trail grows out pretty darn quick. Getting back onto trail, seeing these blazes kind of gives me this odd feeling of coming back to home or seeing something that reminds you of your childhood home, something like that. Kind of disturbing. I guess I've uh, breathed the air, drank the water, change has happened. It's too late for me, but you could still save yourself. This area is the old Davis Hollow shelter, and you can see the steps here that used to support a shelter that is no longer here, and it's a picnic table. A and, and there's a privy back there. Well, it was moved to Damascus, according to one of the comments. Yeah, for some reason they moved it to Damascus. So when we get to Damascus, we'll hunt it down. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Would be a good sign for somebody going Sobo. Somebody put a nice sign out. And if we had made it this far in Nobo, we would have been happy to see that one. Still happy to see it. All right, we're being watched. But we gotta go up this way. We'll just keep an eye on her. Just came across this sign. Headwaters Middle Fork of the Holston River near early settlement known as Davis Fancy, 1748, Smith County, Virginia. There's a cemetery up there. And there's a cemetery. There's a sign here. This is Davis Cemetery, that away. Are we going to go see it? I think we're at the Davis Cemetery. Oh boy. It's seen better days. Oh. Yeah, it looks like those ones are just 14 months, 16 days. Some of these, I guess. Yeah. Like 1867, 1886. Blessed are they in the Lord. Davis. Annie and Harold. Father and mother. Oh. It's just a specific family plot. Yeah. This one. Wife I, of F.G. Davis. It says, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Looks like a Lizzie. Lizzie M., wife of F.G. Davis, born in 1859, died in 1896. It looks like an 898 or something. Oh, it could be. Yeah. A couple smaller ones with LMD. I assume children. Or... That's about it, though. Well, here's one over here. Boy, this would be nice if this was maintained better, but maybe the family doesn't live around here and no ancestors. This says, oh, son of, it's like D.W.N. something, Davis, December 28, 1881, died um, March 18th, 18, looks like 83, so two years old. Yeah. Oh, and I think that used to be propped up in there. Hmm, here's a view of what's around here. See, there's a couple homes. Oh, cool. Look at that. There's an old log cabin over there for someone's home. I'm not sure if they're part of the Davis family or... Maybe some kind of, yeah. Here.
And it's a sign seen right over here at Atkins, I believe. We ate over at the Mexican restaurant there in the Exxon station. And I'm sure hoping the AC is that way. Ate a lot of food. I'm waddling. But we, don't we need to get back tonight. on trail. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll eat something anyway. We'll be hungry in no time. Looks like a beaver dam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're at the schoolhouse and behind it, there are two privies, one for the boys and one for the girls. I'm not sure if they're in use today, but let's go check a look. I'm hoping they are in use today. Hmm. No. Spider webs across the entrance. Oh boy. I would give definitely give this one a one. <laughs> Here's a look at the schoolhouse from behind. I was told that we can actually stay inside here, but I'm not sure. And there's a pavilion, I think, not too far away um, that we might try and go to. I think Paul went down the street to see if it's down here or not. I'm not quite sure where it's at on the trail. the schoolhouse. I can tell us not to build a fire in here, which is okay. I got the old desk still here. Old chair. That must have been where the firewood was. Teacher's desk. And then a lot of people have signed the board. There was some historical information about this on the board at one time. All right, let's have a look at, boy, what a cute little schoolroom. Got two windows on each side. And they have a place where hikers can sign their name. Dunce cap. <laughs> All right, we'll sign the book and I guess we'll move on. <laughs> 